channel three four seven. Your hallucinating state of nations today. The only the only person that you can do any damage to is yourself ever. Uh, cosmic law. If you shoot a gun into someone else's head, the co the law has a kind of interesting way of dealing with it. In other words, you can shoot the gun. You can fire a gun into someone else's head, and you have the freedom to do it. I'm not talking about society's law because you don't have. The, re the right to shoot someone in the head according to the society we live in. And if you're caught, you'll be dealt. But I'm not talking about that law because that law is a template over the cosmic law which allows you to do it. You can plan, you can, you can, you can subject uh, your prey to whatever and you think fits and uh, that can take place in any manner in which you like and you can be mesmerized by those who partake in the ritual of ending someone's life or preventing them from speaking it's no difference it's the same Cosmic law has an interesting way of, of, of uh, sorting itself out. In that, uh, there's a cycle. Some animals need to. Uh, some animals kill other animals in order to survive themselves, because they've got something going on tomorrow that, obviously, the cosmos allows for. But at some point, they'll become the prey to something else, which takes their life away in the same manner that they took someone else's life away. That's the way it is. That's life and death. The problem with humans is they've got a double kind of helix problem in that, apart from being emotionally underdeveloped, um, Apart from being on, on my, I mean, that, that came from, um, I can't remember his name now, but I saw it the other day. It's a guy who, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a kind of psychologist. And um, he, his line was, um, his line, and what, I get his name sometimes because I quite like him. Uh, his line was, um, the leaders you have in this society exactly mirror, reflect in the mirror the underdeveloped emotional aspects of those who put them there. Exactly right. The leaders you choose in today's society are nothing more than the underdeveloped emotional... So in other words, we're um, mostly infantiles now i've got nothing against i've got nothing against infants or children in fact you know if you kind of if you kind of um, look at look at children their insight is often much greater than adults why because adults have had the initiation the initiation rights into a template on the law on society on the cosmos shaped over the cosmic law which sits underneath that which is the original it's always been there and it it rules everything you know um what we're looking at is what i'm looking at is to develop the idea that we're virtual beings in a virtual world which i could do i could do something with a color on this the, um, there were virtual beings in, in, a, in a virtual landscape, in other words, were hallucinating completely. Um, 
this reality is a hallucination reality. I'll give you. I'll give you some. Of, let me give you some of the background to to that because. Far from, you know, the psychiatrists and the doctors and the scientists coming up with ideas that, you know, when you take a hallucinogenic, you're, um, you're, it sets up the ability for your eyes to be deceived by a hallucination of some kind or other. Far from it, what they're doing instead is revealing the underlying reality in whatever fashion that particular hallucinogenic, and each hallucinogenic has a different, slightly different angle on the same story. That's why there's, there's so many varieties of the same thing. What they're doing is, re is, is revealing the underlying subconscious reality. In other words, the underlying subconscious reality is the reality, or you know, that subconscious reality that most people deny, that subconscious reality that most people deny, um, is, is true. In other words, it's real. And um, what, the, what the plant does, or, or indeed, you know, the, the mechanized version of it, as in, LSD or DMT um, does is really just bring out what's already there. So, you know, a lot of people might say, I stopped smoking because it was starting to make me feel paranoid. Well, no, it didn't do that. The underlying paranoia was something that kind of was contained within your own psyche, psyche that you hadn't dealt with. And that what the plant was doing was bringing laps of the poor, your own psyche. It's all about self-discovery, this planet, this existence. It's about self-discovery, and the self-discovery is that it's not real. In other words, we are not real. We're skins operating in the game where even, you know, to the extent that blood and, and flesh don't mean anything, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're the, the illusion to, to a greater reality. And that comes in with, you know, when you begin to understand what the spirit is, now most people haven't, haven't, they hear the words, right, you know, we are spirits living in a, uh, having a human existence. We are spirits having a human existence. Now you know how many people actually, how many people actually listen to the words, and begin to take on what that means. Well, I would argue not many. Uh, um, and if if you want to find out, there's nothing better than than taking up the word conspiracy because um, that puts you in your place. You know, when I when I first got onto the idea of conspiracy, let, let me just let me just back that up with. Let me back that up with. You know, I've always realised something was wrong. Right from, right from a very young age, right. Or you know, I look at I looked at the world and I'm thinking, well, you know, there's contradictions here that just don't add up. So what's wrong? Well, you know, the the question to keep a hold of is what's wrong. So. Uh, even though you might not understand it when you're young, it, you, you kind of keep hold of the idea that there's something not quite right. Eventually, you're going to get to the point where you start asking the right questions. You won't ask them straight away because you know, because you're trained to, 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 to you're trained into another uh, into a template. The template is the human institutions that have kind of overridden the cosmic background to everything and um i'm a, i'm on i'm on um Kapaki today which is you know another sign that well you know if they want to if they want to sponsor they can I, i'm going to give them the right to but what they're going to kind of find themselves facing with faced with is is no compromise I'm not. I'm never going to be compromised on what I say, how I say it, or 
what I do. I'm doing it. I'm doing it out of my own freedom and rights to do so, which is what people have got right. Well, you know, you'll find you'll find um, you'll find at the end of the day the word is a bit easier going on the karma than a bullet. They are bullets and they are animals. Which is another song, which won't go back. They are bullets. Ah. So, the human institution of, you know, what we deem to be the right and wrong thing to do is a bunch of morals, which, you know, far from people actually living to, they're doing more complaining about. So what I'm saying is, you know, it's time, it's time for you to start looking within and and coming up with a few answers yourself rather than relying on a meme that someone else planted in front of you which obviously reflects what you're thinking without you saying anything but you have the freedom to actually add to it or you know reflect on it most people do that well, you know, you can look at Facebook today, you know, it was once deemed as, <coughs> it was once deemed as the, um, uh, I'm just checking my sound, I think I might be distorting some of the time. It was when, once deemed as the, um, you know, revolution coming and has proved beyond doubt as far as, as, far as I'm concerned. Or, you know, look at the responses, you know, we make to each other. They're, they're infants' responses. So they're not conversations because we don't know how to have a conversation. We haven't got there yet. This is, this is a state of humanity. You know, it's kind of like after 2,000 years of developing the, the, um, the intellect, humans have not gone to the idea of correspondence. And the first place to find correspondence, well, where is it? We have to find correspondence within yourself. You're not going to find happiness out there at all. Happiness don't come out there. So if you're looking for a crutch to back up what you kind of fail to uh, find, have found within yourself because you haven't even looked yet, then you can do that. You can find crutches. You know, and most people go for the love crutch. And so they pick up someone and they kind of like beg them to, to marry them or, you know, become, uh, get involved in a relationship and it kind of, it, it has the effect of um, hiding what they've not discovered in themselves yet until, you know, one day, after six months of, you know, absolute ravenous love, uh, they find that it's not quite what, the, the person that they kind of got in a relationship with isn't quite what they thought it, thought it was. And so they start having this war, wars, this war going on with themselves and, and and with the person they're involved with and, and and what happens you know it's like man starts looking at others and it gets discovered by a woman who he once told that he loved alone and that's the crutch it's a crutch right the twin flame the twin flame that you're looking for is yourself the twin your twin flame is yourself and that's why, you know, I come back to, you know, that you can shoot a, a bullet into someone's face, right? Well, if you shoot a bullet into someone's face, it's going to come back sometime. It takes a different route because that's the nature of this wondrous cosmos we're living in. And, that, you know, it's not coming back straight away. But the metaphor is that it comes back and it shoots you right in the back of the head. Because that's what you're doing. It's the mirror of life. You know, back to the mirror, the, the leaders that you you put up, right? They're not chosen from across, they're not chosen from um, a cross-section of uh, the whole community. They're chosen from a very specific group. <coughs> and most of that group have been educated in um, an elite school somewhere. Which is utterly related to the the lodge, the lodge's cult, 
cult culture uh, that grow up around um, the elites who are only the elites because most people don't understand themselves and that's the reflection so they get a, a mirror uh, displayed back at them and that's why you've got COVID now because COVID is nothing more than the um, uh, lack of intellectual, emotional development. In other words, what I was also saying back then is an un, uh, is a undeveloped emotional response to that which goes on around you. You've been trained into it, you know, since birth, right? And that birth. That birth, you have no, you have no say as to who, who you, who you, and this is, you know, another, another thing, like reincarnation. So your your tomorrow's life, if you like. Your tomorrow's life depends on the life you're, you're, you're living now. So it depends on the acts and the deeds and the places you go. Well, you know, if you want to alienate yourself from the rest of society, it's very easy to do that. You pick up on the word conspiracy and you kind of find out what goes on, right? Because what the first thing that happens, if you kind of get onto this idea there might be something going on, which is kind of exactly what happens to me, and it's actually what happens to anybody because um, well, you know, maybe not everybody in this life, but it will happen to some sometime in the future life if the cycle that we're on is going to be repeated which it might do i don't know i kind of got this feeling it might not because i think we're at the end of a cycle a twenty-five thousand year cycle um which is you know a, a difficult number because not many people get the idea you know beyond a few years people kind of start going sky so they can't really think in those is greater cycles but the spirit knows <laughs> Your spirit knows knows uh, all about the great cycles, just like the old ancients did and the Indians. They took up the land, right? And the sacredness of the land, the motherland. You know, I know this, the Nazis also had a go at that one, but well, actually, it wasn't bad. It was uh, it was. Um, uh, Something that you know, you, you know, if you, if you want to get the twist on the Nazis, was at the sign, the swastika, and it was a peace sign. And the twist on on the on the Second World War is uh, the uh, the Nazis were the good ones. Well, you know, the, the philosophy behind it, but you know, okay, who killed you know thousands and thousands of Jews right across uh, in. in in Germany and then in Russia, and who killed them? Well, people taking orders is that's what killed them. People believing in their leaders. You know, it was it was um, it was Rothschilds who said, you know, that I've got five sons. If there were no wars, if they didn't want a war, there wouldn't be any. Now, who's Mr. Rothschild? He's not the banker. Where is the bank who supplies the money? For all those who are uh, uh, involved in, um, you know, bullets or missiles, bloodshedding. So he provides the money for both sides. Well, you know, it's not skin up his nose as to whoever wins, it doesn't matter. He's supplying the money for the profit to be made. And we live in a society where, you know, you've got to make a profit. So you got to have a job. So, you know, who is that job for? Well, if you didn't ask, then you're never going to find out or know that it wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't you. You never stood up. And then if you don't stand up, which is like, you know, you've got to stand up. Get into conspiracy, because what happens, with, what happens when you get into conspiracy several things which which I'm saying you know you'll come to at some point because uh, you know you'll wonder and it's quite a good idea to ask questions and even if you don't know which is you know the philosophy here don't know you know it's okay not to know and in not knowing you have to ask questions so you know you can get answers 
can get answers. As long as you don't know. There's no point in kind of there's no point in there's no point in in, in uh in having any intelligence at all unless you don't know. Which which makes you ask questions. So, you know, eventually, uh, as a as a young child growing up, eventually thinking there might be some kind of like weird dystopia going on. Then you know the next the next thing is well you know how does it work right? Well, you, then you have to start researching things that you don't get taught at school. But then lots of things you don't get taught at school because we got you're coming back to template again. There's a template. Uh, riding over the top of cosmic, the cosmic story, and you need to get off the template. It's a template. It's like an etched template, two dimensions, and that's what society is. You kind of have to start asking questions, and as soon as you kind of do, you kind of get this word. You know, today you get this word conspiracy fly out of nowhere. I I didn't even know conspiracy. Uh, even after I started asking questions, and I and I kind of read my history of the Rothschilds family was one of the first things I did, and I looked at that, and this was you know in the days of online. So before online, I wouldn't have known or ever known because unless I'd been told or invited, invited to, and this is why, you know, Masonic's quite interesting because you know, if you look at the only teaching in the West that that picks up on the old Masonic story, which is a stonemason that built cathedrals. In other words, they had the secret of sacred geometry, which they needed to build those amazing spaces of stone. They had the secret, which is one of the teachings that comes with Masons, the Masonic story. If you look at them, then their teaching reveals a kind of secret, which is exactly the the space of everything. In other words, you know, there is a sacred geometry, not just in stones, but underlying background space. We're all built into it. If you look at the, um, if you look at the nature of, uh, if you look into, you won't know it unless you do, but if you look into the nature of the background space of everything, you'll start to notice something, which is uh, nature, like, 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 if you take my finger, for instance, it's kind of a, it's got three parts, three bones, right? One, two, three. They're not the same length. They're kind of like different, slightly different lengths. Okay, so, um, but what do they all subscribe to? Just like uh, the branches on the tree subscribe to. What do they subscribe to? A ratio. It's all the same ratio. Now, if you look at if you so uh, where a branch takes off from the previous branch is exactly inside a ratio, which is connected with the Fibonacci sequence, which is the golden the golden ratio, which is the background space of all space, including one space that which you can't see. So we're built into a cosmic universe in which not just nature but us as well, brain the three parts, if you look, is all built into the same background structure, geometry, which is the mathematics. So you're looking at a universe which is not not as it's been sold, which is, you know, an organic, you know, explosion that came from nowhere and just so happened that, well, it's not, it's, it's impossible if you think about it more than for more than five minutes. It's absolutely impossible because you'll get to the mathematics of, of something which is constructed. Not not in the sense that, you know, it's like uh, two inches up, two inches. It's not a square box. It's a ratio, which is the beauty of nature. Because nature, nature has the same ratio throughout. So what you have to, what you then get to is, you know, you know, if it was, if it was an intelligent, there was an intelligence that created everything, and there's something else going on. It's unavoidable, right? There's something else going on beyond the organic explosion that came out of a four billion year old 
something else going on, which gives you a uh, eventually kind of yeah, kind of wake you up into um, dimensions, which which allow for the fact that there might be some other intelligence behind the dimension that you're existing, or uh, as 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 you'll find out, it's not behind; it's in. Well, it's is in within within. In other words, we don't we don't actually live outside the oldest ancient community that, that, that you think of in a linear sense. We don't live outside that, we live within it. And the words, history and time are, are, aren't, aren't real in the sense that the template that gives you an education which tries to tell you that history is past tense is wrong. In other words, we're living in the past tense anyway, it's present. In other words, all the wars that took place forever and a day are actually taking place today as well. And uh, that's the template. So they're not giving you that part of the education, so eventually you'll get onto the cosmic world, which gives you no time, non-linear time, and uh, multi-dimensional, multi-dimensional, well, you know, you can go on. Well, how do you get to that? Going anywhere you like in a time machine that takes you from one dimension to another without the fact, without the knowledge that there were previous civilizations that broke away from this, the restriction of the kind of knowledge that you get from being human in the wrong education? How do you get to that? How'd you get to the place where there might be an intelligence that created what we know? So that, so that, which gives you the, you know, the firman, firman, I believe in the firman, firman, I can't say the word, firman, I've got no teeth, right? It kind of, it all came out. I did my experience with tooth pain. How'd you get to the firman? And the fact that the, the space, as we know it, doesn't exist. It's in, in, it's within. In other words, you're looking at a hologram, and you are a hologram. The projection from what? Well, <laughs> you need to think about these things because it's worth dwelling on. You know, one day you wake up to the fact that from where you are on the realm of what we call Earth, there's a moon that so just so happens to fit exactly, precisely, into the sun with a tiny little corona ring around it. It's so precise in mathematics, it kind of makes your mind boggle. Well, you know, like if you spend too long thinking about it, you're kind of going to go insane. And so uh, what you're going to have to do is come up with a, with the notion that it's not it's not it's not a coincidence. So there's another intelligence going on in a dimension you haven't quite worked out yet. You can't see it because unless you're in it, you, you can only see the dimension below the one you know you're in. So most people think they're in the third dimension, which you know, the body is, but the mind's not, because they're not thinking correctly. <coughs> it's an emotional, um, infantile response to something which is right in your face. You have to open up to the fact that there's something else going wrong. And you see on your answer, right? So you have to. Now, you might not know all the answers. You know, like, in fact, you know, we're coming back again. Don't know. Good good thing. Remain don't know because don't know gives you the freedom to ask the question. You'll never know. No one being will ever know the truth to everything. That's why we're all counted because every single unique human being provides a different part of the same story to the whole story. So we're each, we're each, we're each signed virtual reality, we're each assigned jobs, if you like, it's not job, it's play, it's the child's play, which is, you know, like, why the child is 
way, way ahead of the adult who's been kind of trampled on by an education system that just does not add up. And there's this trying to survive in a system that's just dying. And then being controlled by people who, you know, have every right to control you because you're stupid. They're doing that, they're kind of taking your life from you because you're stupid. Because you haven't, you haven't given it any sort. It's not their fault, it's your fault. And that's why I come back to, that's why I come back to, that's why I come back to not kill yourself. You can only damage yourself. You're looking at yourself. So the power, the powers that be are a reflection of your inability to reflect on what you might not know you are, which is a, which is a spirit, which is beyond the third dimensional physical matter of stuff. And it takes a while to get over it. So. You know, when I when I say, once you get on to conspiracy, you know, you kind of drop the word conspiracy because it's made up, it's, it's, a, it's an irrelevance. You start asking questions, but the first thing that happens if you do it is that, you know, you lose your family, and then you lose your friends, and then you lose, then you lose everything, everything known, and you eventually find yourself on your own. And what happens when you're on your own? Well, it's a space on your own, and if you're crushed by it, you're kind of going to go lose, but what you're meant to do is get up again. Everybody falls. Everybody falls. But even if you fall, you see, this is, this is the secret, of, you know, it's one of the secrets that Alan Watts has tried to explain, and still people are trying to explain, and I can see it, and the Kabbalists do it as well. You know, they do it right across society, it's that, uh, you know, uh, there's no such thing as death. Well, you know, think about that. There's no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. How many times do you have to say that? And what you're meant to do is kind of, and here, here it is, right? What you're meant to do is die before you die. You understand what's going on there. It doesn't take an awful lot, you just have to look at the, the the seasons in nature or the way nature works because it kind of goes around in cycles. So you might see lots of bloodshed, but it, it, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's meaningless. It doesn't matter how much blood there is. You're meant to wake up to it and know that it probably shouldn't be going on, right? It's better so that there's an emotional response to the way that most people are being treated by what? No, not them. It's nothing to do with them. They're just nature responding to your lack of intellectual rigor and your inability to respond to something which is right in your face. Yourself. You're looking at yourself. Always. That's the that's universe we're living in. If you, if you really want to, if you really believe in one love, right, uh, I, I, I'm not interested in the group, I'm not interested in groups, but if you believe, if that's what you, you're going for, and then you're just talking about an, an absolutely connected whole being, which includes everybody. Including those you kind of seemingly hate because they're, they're responding in a way which is a bit more. Anyway, I'm going to stop now because I, I've rambled. But um, uh, so we'll pick up. I am the virtual reality is going to be an ongoing thing. But you know, um, I, I I might get a conversation from one day. Who knows? Bye.